Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Virginia City Council meeting. This is a special personnel committee, the whole meeting. There is one item on the agenda, and that is to discuss the potential furlough of city employees, which is an unfortunate topic that we have to talk about today. Uh, uh, for the city council, uh, Pam, are you on the line? Okay, we'll have her take the roll call while, while, while she's getting on the line. Um, Everybody has a, a, every city councilor has a packet of information that was emailed to you and there's some hard copies available if you don't have them and also for the city attorney or, or in our city uh, 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 workforce. Uh, we do have uh, the AFSCME representative Amanda Metzik present and uh, we have uh, union stewards from a couple of the unions here. We have the fire chief, the assistant fire chief and uh, uh, the, the assistant chief of police and the uh, bill uh, Hannes from the engineering department and some other uh, parking uh, uh, public works employees uh, present in the room. Uh, we're practicing our social distancing as best we can, and we're here to discuss that. So is Pam on the line? Yes. Pam? I'm on. Yes, I'm on. Good morning. Good morning. Would you please take the roll call? We're going to turn up the little volume a little bit. Mayor Blue? Present. Friedley? Here. Paulson? Here. Beyondich? Here. Johnson? Here. Baronzelli? Absent. Okay. And Cuffey? Present. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, well, we'll turn this uh, portion of the meeting over to our city administrator along with our city. Uh, Finance HR director for discussion purposes regarding this one item that's on the agenda, which is discuss the potential furlough for city employees. I'll turn this over to our city administrator, Britt C. Bennis. Britt. Thank you. On March 16, 2020, Governor Walls signed Executive Order 20 04, ordering the closure of bars, restaurants, and other places of public accommodation. At that time, the city had responded by closing access to our public buildings, but staff were still reporting to duty as normal. On March 27th, or, I'm sorry, as per executive order number 2020, on March 27th, the city of Virginia decided to um, separate their employees into essential or non-essential categories, and those non-essential staff were directed to stay home as per the governor's orders and the Stay, stay Home Minnesota Act. Employees were put on paid administrative leave, so they would remain on call and working during normal work day. However, when they were at home, they do not accumulate sick leave, vacation, or comp. Critical or essential staff that were able to telecommute began working from home on March 30th, 2020. These employees were paid as normal, but were required to work from home and to document the work that they were doing. Um, th they were using uh, means to log into their computers here, so all work was stored here at City Hall, not stored on their personal computers. All other critical or essential staff began to rotate schedules as of March 30th to minimize the number of staff on a work day in, a, in an attempt to protect the employees through social distancing. Emergency Executive Order 20-33 extended the state home Minnesota order from April 8th through May 3rd. So at that time, on April 10th, all temporary, part-time, and casual employees were laid off. On April 20th, the city required all non-essential staff to report to work in a closed facility on an alternating basis. And then April 27th, all employees who cannot telecommute are to return to work, which is today, in closed facilities. As of April 18, 2020, the COVID cost for employee paid administrative leave that I referenced earlier has been $64,223.88. Thankfully, we have some really, really uh, wonderful staff who have went out and sought some grants for us, and to date, we've received $60,000 from the state of Minnesota COVID-19 grant and $70,095.82 from the CARES Federal Act. However, Sherry... Erickson, our finance director, has been notified by St. Louis County that they are estimating our first tax payment for 2020 will be delayed with an estimated shortfall or delay of $964,924.80. This payment is usually received by June. Is that correct, Sherry? Yeah. And they're expecting a delay into August. We have, Sherry and I have been um, trying to be proactive rather than reactive with the COVID-19 closures and have been meeting with union staff since March. And I think we've been doing a very good job of trying to keep everybody working safely. Safety has been our number one priority, social distancing, safety, reacting to people that have gone sick or have concerns. We've done the best we can. However, if we do have a short tax payment, we're gonna have a serious cash flow issue. 
Therefore, it's my recommendation as a, as the city administrator that we look at a temporary furlough of city staff. Okay, uh, thank you, Britt. So um, you might go into the uh, part of our packet where we have what's the difference between a furlough and a layoff. Great, I will do that. That's a great point. I, yep. Those two words are very commonly used interchangeably, furlough versus layoff. However, a furlough is a temporary layoff from work where you're intended that you're going to come back, your position's still going to be there, that you're still going to come back to work at some time. Oftentimes in furlough, your benefits are still paid, but the employee is not receiving a paycheck from the company. In a layoff situation, the employee is not guaranteed to come back. They are laid off. They do not get any benefits. They do not accrue any benefits, and their, their position may not be filled again. At all. So okay. to, to kind of talk about my plan, what I thought, and again, this is just my thought. This is for the council to discuss today. I would suggest that if we do a furlough, that we, we, the city, city council, determines the staffing levels. And we meet with the unions on seniority and bumping. I suggest that we volunteers for we seek volunteers for the furlough. We ask every employee throughout the city if anybody's interested in taking the furlough. From the volunteers that we receive, we'll award the employees with most seniority. Will be given the first opportunity to be placed on the furlough. If no volunteers are received or not enough volunteers received by department, furloughs will impact the least senior employees first. The employees are recommended and are very suggested that they shall apply for unemployment benefits. At this time, unemployment benefits are one half of your weekly wage plus $600 is what the employee would receive. Unemployment. The city can allow staff to keep medical and dental insurance if they are on a furlough. The city would pay the city portion. The employee would be responsible for the monthly employee premium. They would be invoiced. Employees shall not accrue vacation or sick time while on furlough. Employees on furlough will not receive payments for PERA, health care savings plan, or deferred comp. This is where the savings comes in because we'll be paying one half of their pay to unemployment and we'll be paying no PERA, no taxes, no health care savings, no deferred comp. The city reserves the right to recall any or all staff during a declared emergency or when the health or safety of the citizens of Virginia are in jeopardy. In the recall of regular employees, the senior regular employee shall be given preference over the junior regular employee, which means we'll call back by seniority. The employer will notify the regular employee within three calendar days to return to work. Failure to report within five days shall be considered a voluntary quit. Any staff member who retires while they are on furlough, which shall be still entitled to any benefits that they have per their contract, and the city which does agree to meet with the union on a regular basis throughout this furlough. If we choose to do a layoff, it's all the same information as the furlough, except that there's no medical or dental insurance. That's the big difference. Okay. Big difference. Yep. All right. Thank you. Uh, any city councilor have a question up at this point in time before we move on? Uh, first, Councilor Johnson, and then on to Councilor Biondis. Councilor Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, right when you talk about the uh, for, uh, not receiving payments to para and the other deferred comp things, does that affect their contract? Like, because there's no payments, is there something that happens in there that would be long-term? I mean, other than not getting payments, does it affect the continuality or any other kind of stuff in that? I, I just want to make... I know that, that it does. There's, they just don't get any deferred comp. There's no balloon payment at the end of the year or anything, they just don't get any accrual for that time. They don't okay. get deferred comp or health care savings while they're off. That's all I have right now. Thank you, Ben. Uh, before we go to Council, to be honest, uh, do you have one question uh, with respect to PERA? Uh, as the employees are looking uh, for the, uh, the voluntary furlough, say here's the example, an employee does take a voluntary furlough, and part of that furlough, of course, is no payment in, uh, to PERA. The question that I have is during their tenure as an employee with the city of Virginia, so say you have a 15-year employee who's been uh, paying into PRA for the 15 years, and during the course of this furlough, they're no longer paying into PRA. Correct. So does that, is that a gap in their PRA service? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Great question. Yep, thank you. Uh, I'm glad that's the case. Okay, uh, Councilor Biondich. So because this came upon us so fast, I am wondering what are, because according to what the information we got, they are going back to work now, correct? No, they are, those that have, we are still under, under governor's orders, those that tele, can telecommute have to telecommute. Okay. So, so mostly are, back. There, yes. are there, 
projects in the city that can be worked on at this time yes. instead of doing furloughs. Yes. That is, that is the downfall of a furlough, is that with less staff, less things will get done. So we can't put people to do the tests that have been put off because there is no time? Correct. There will be some things that they just won't be able to do because they won't have staff. But would we be able to put staff back to work to do those tasks? We, there is a clause. If you go a little farther in the packet, the, um, we had met with AFSCME on Friday, and they had thrown out an idea that we talk about doing a rotation if any, any departments are interested, that they work two weeks and one week off to try to furlough. So when did this furlough go into effect? It has not. The council has to determine that today if you want to do a furlough or not. So people have been working full-time up until today? People have been paid full-time up to today. Okay. And I guess, I guess I'm not opposed to that, but there are jobs that I asked about last summer that because of time and lack of people to do those jobs, they never get done. So my question is, why aren't we doing those now while we have downtime? Is there a specific one you have a question on? Ed, we have the department director here. We can ask Public Works what it. We have trees, numerous trees in the, t in the city that need trimming. We have streets. We have, we have the drain it, the drains. There's one right on the corner of our block that is completely plugged. I mean, aren't there jobs that could be worked on? Yeah, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that there's a $900,000 potential shortfall for three months that the city's going to have to sit and think about what are we going to do. So they've been furloughed for a month already. By governor's orders, yes. We had to figure it upon. The temporaries were they're laid not off. Furloughed. They're, not, they're not furloughed. They've been on paid administrative leave. Right. Okay, so if this shortfall comes, what is going to happen? That's what we're talking about now. Okay. Yes. It's, it's what not, are we going to do? We're deciding whether we furlough or lay off. Or if anybody has another idea of how we're going to save $900,000, I'm very open to talk about that. If we were to look at a layoff, is there a way to work with the union to continue paying those medical benefits? That's a furlough. That's a furlough, not a layoff. So with a furlough, we can't have as many people working. Correct. But we pay all the benefits. Correct. And what's going to come down the pike if this continues on? That's what we have to figure out. Correct. So we may be facing... Right. Thank you. And I, I also think that we've never had this... Um, situation Never. as many cities are right now facing these big shortfalls and I guess that is kind of where I'm coming from is how are we going to do this how are we going to continue with said projects and if we run out of money done okay thank you you know, I think you know, we all share that same concern that you have, Councillor Beyond. It's the goal and objective, from my perspective, is to, to do this as, as painlessly as we possibly can, keeping in mind the, uh, the professional staff that we have working for us. And we've had, we have dedicated employees, as probably private sector does as well, but we're a public sector entity. So our goal and objective is to try to minimize as much impact on the employees as possible. And by looking at the, the three alternatives and the potentially the fourth one that may come later on down the pike, which we hope we'll never have to get to, is a permanent layoff or whatever the case may be for a long period of time. That's the long-term thing. But the first three things I think that we have a concern about is one is furlough. I can't hear anything, Brett. Yeah. Can, you, can you hear me now, Pam? Mm, uh, a little bit. Can you hear me, Pam? Uh, somewhat. Can you hear us now? Yes, not as loud though. Okay. Okay, I'll uh, I'll, re I'll repeat. Can you hear me now, Pam? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Um, really, there, right now, I think we, we're considering three options or a combination of those three options. Uh, we've already laid off the temporary personnel. We have full-time 
People have been working for us for whether it's a year, or six months, or 15 years, or 30 years. And so our goal and objective is to try to continue to provide the essential services that we need to provide, keeping in mind that we have a concern with respect to what our budget is and how much money we have. Now, we're basing our, we'll have to base our decision on an unknown. And that is this, the county is uh, indicating that, and they don't know for sure either, that they may only collect 50% of the property taxes, you know, uh, within the county, and the payback to the city, and as uh, uh, resulting in a $964,000 uh, shortfall that we have. So for us, I think we need to do this incrementally. First, uh, there's a furlough thing for us to decide. Uh, second, layoffs come later on down the road, but you have a voluntary furlough, then you might have a, a, uh, a, um, a mandatory furlough, and then you might have what we, uh, with what our city staff has already offers, was a, um, a early retirement or a retirement of, uh, a voluntary retirement based upon you know, years of service, and if that would be something that the employee would consider. So we're looking at all those factors. That's one factor is being considered that would determine how many people get furloughed. Uh, and then secondly, how many people will volunteer to be furloughed. And then how many people would be mandated to furlough. And if that doesn't meet the goal and objective of our ability to save the amount of money necessary in order to continue to operate and provide the essential services later on down the road, if this lasts a long period of time, you know, layoffs may have to be considered. I don't, hopefully that'll never get to that point. But for us, you know, the savings of layoffs is much more than savings of, of, of a furlough. But I think we have an obligation to do this incrementally. And speaking to other mayors of larger cities, uh, they're laying off people right and left. Not furloughs, some are furloughs, but a lot of them are being laid off. So we're not the only city that's considering this. Yeah, you know, we, uh, we're a city obviously of over 5,000, so we're kind of in the middle between 10,000 and over in uh, cities under 5,000, so we're kind of unique in that regard. But I think uh, uh, city staff, our city administrator, our, our, our city finance and uh, human resource director have been trying to work closely with the individual unions and their representatives and try to come up with a plan moving forward. And I think as we discuss this today, we're going to be looking at that. We're going to be giving some direction to our city administrator to continue and our city uh, uh, human resource director to consider, continue to work with their unions to follow this path of furlough first. Voluntary uh, uh, retirement, maybe, if somebody you know, takes advantage of that or not, uh, whether there's a voluntary furlough, how many people take advantage of that, mandatory furlough, how many take care of that. And to answer Councilor Biondich's question, is our, our, our city um, project's going to suffer as a result of, of course they are, because we're not going to have the staff that we need. But trimming trees is not an essential you know, service. Uh, cleaning a drain uh, or uh, delaying it for two weeks is not an essential service. It's a necessary service. It's a service that we need to be done. It's a service that's been on, on the chopping block. I mean, it's been on the list to get done. And the longer we wait, the more it becomes a problem. But, you know, it, it's, it's all about the revenue stream, not about the projects. So I think as we move forward in determining, giving if we give the authority to move forward, determining what those priority projects are with uh, 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 our Park and Rec Director Brian Silver having the, uh, having the authority over the trees, for example. And then you have uh, our, our, our water and sewer drain system uh, with Public Works are working to try to get those kind of things accomplished, get those projects on the, on the block. These are, some of these are scheduled maintenance problems, and some of these are priorities. So I look for our individual departments to look at what is the priority here, to try and answer those questions. And if we can get to those things, and uh, Councillor Biondich has alluded to, I think you know, we need to do that. But I think by prioritizing that, allowing our staff to do so, I think with the, with the shortage of personnel we're going to have as a result of this, how long this is going to last, we don't know. But it's, it's fortunate that we have unemployment compensation that's being paid on the federal basis at $600 a week, which helps uh, us make this decision a little bit easier. It makes the employee on a voluntary furlough, makes it a little bit easier for them to make a decision if they can afford to do so. You know, we look, we look for that. So that being said, uh, uh, Councillor Beyond, did you have a retort for that? I did. And I didn't mean that... Um they're trivial jobs. What I'm trying to get to is, is there things that as long as this is going on that they, we could keep people working? 
and keep them on. It wasn't to say, well, that's not important. Um, right. It was, I'm trying to get to, it, are there projects that could be done while this is happening to keep them working? Definitely. That was, the, that was my point. I want to see everybody able to work. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, and I think we all want that too. So, Councillor Bearable. Yeah, I, I've uh, been doing some research here, and Sherry can uh, tell you, and I've uh, kept base with Sherry on this about the loss of dollars that potentially could come from the uh, county. Number one, uh, I need to ask Sherry this question. I didn't get back to her. Did you get a hold of that gal I gave you the name of? And, and we can still get our 70% early, correct? That's by state law. I left uh, a Christine a message. She did not return my voicemail. Okay. I have already submitted the 70% advancement. I uh, CC'd you and Britt and the clerk today on that. Okay. According to the St. Louis County Tax Man Manager, Brandon Larson, he doesn't believe the county can deny us that 70% because it's in... State law, so that means we'd have about a 30% possible reduction of our full value in, in July, which uh, I'm guessing you must have calculated at that $900,000. Is that correct, Sherry? Sorry, I missed the last part of your question. Uh, you must have calculated the potential 30% loss on, on the uh, dollars, which is the 900000 Am I correct on that? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're, we're not in dire needs. The county cannot... They're just a pass-through for dollars from the state and from from the dollars that we derive from our taxes. Uh, so our state aid should not be affected, correct? That, that's good. That is good. Okay. LGA and state aid have not had any impacts yet. Okay. And I don't anticipate they can because those are, those are built into legislation. Sherry, you want to? Yeah, if I just add on to that, um, Councilor Barabu, the the fact is that they're just concerned they're not going to get the tax money in collected because they feel they've had numerous calls saying, we can't make our taxes, we can't pay our taxes. Now, when I, you know, thought about this and did mull it over, um, most everybody who has a mortgage has that escrowed in That's there. That's correct. But realize that there's a handful of people that own property outright, don't have a mortgage on it. They may not be able to make their taxes. So that, that's I believe at percentage. this point in time we need to wait a little bit uh, longer to see what this tax uh, uh, ramification may be. You may not agree with the rest of the counselors, but I had a long conversation with Brandon. He doesn't believe the hit is going to be as bad because most of these people are going to be um, uh, are paying and are already paying. A lot of them have paid already. Anybody that um, had their stuff early has already paid. Uh, you know, I know my wife and I have already paid. Retired people aren't going to be, and we've had a lot of retired, aren't going to be quite in as bad a boat because they plan ahead for their taxes and stuff. So those people that don't plan ahead for their taxes don't save money on a monthly basis that are going to be in trouble. Escode people are fine. Um, I don't believe we're going to take a worse hit than the 30%. That's my opinion at this point uh, from talking also to the tax manager. Of St. Louis County, and just for to divulge information to the rest of you here, he is my stepson, so I get inside information sometimes. Uh, thank you, Councilor Barbo. You know this is a fluid situation, so I think here for today is for us to give the authority for our city staff to move forward with the discussion about and determining whether this is feasible or not, whether there are five furloughs, whether there are 15 furloughs, or if there's voluntary, non-voluntary, but just to take a look at what can be done in working with the bargaining units to try to accomplish that goal and objective, I think we have to give them the authority to move forward with that. So uh, we don't know how much money we're gonna get. We don't know that. But we have to, I think we have to be prepared to make those decisions or allow our city staff to make those decisions based upon the collection of tax money number one and what can be done with any additional uh, mandates by the governor moving forward after May 4th. Mayor, a counselor of can I, yes, I, counselor just add one, one more. I'm sorry, Julian. I did ask one other question of the tax manager. I said, uh, when this do tax dollars come in, are they um, uh, looked at from the each individual city? How much comes in or not? 
said, no, we don't. It's an aggregate. But yep. he said they can run a report. And that's going to maybe open up a can of worms because cities could come after the county uh, with an injunction or something to stop from getting their portion that's been paid if they get a full portion paid or 80%. That's going to could create a problem uh, because cities may go after that in a legal manner. Because you can't take and distribute from one city to, an, to another if you don't get your full amount. That's not a legal entity. So we won't know. That's why I'm saying I don't care if we, today, if we put this plan in place. I don't want to see us do it right now because we can have a special meeting anytime to do this. The, the advantage of doing it right now is the, the extra $600 per week from the federal is only till July 31. So if, if, the, if there was ever a time for an employee to be laid off, this would be the great time for an employee to be laid off. Furloughed, furloughed. Yep, sorry, Matt, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to continue to use the word furlough, furlough at this point in time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because that leaves their benefits in place. Their benefits still be in place. They would, they would, the highest paid employees would make $1,600 a week. Oh, okay. And just talking to these other mayors, how many, not furloughed, how many people they've actually laid off already and are going to lay off more personnel. So, you know, we're trying to not do that based upon what revenues we have. And we should, we should try to be do that incrementally and only when necessary. Councillor Paulson, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'm trying to talk loud enough so Pam can hear me. So um, I had sent an email on April 23rd to both Britt and Sherry um, after I had heard that some employees were not working and they were being paid. So I was under the impression that there already were furloughed employees, but in clarification, they were on paid administrative leave. Correct. So I just want to put that out there and clarify that um, for maybe any miscommunication that might be out there in the public. Um, some of the questions that I asked, and I greatly, greatly appreciate you answering these questions and defining them, um, because I, I really wanted to be mindful of the employees as well. I'm sure all of all of us have that that same mindset, but. Some of my questions, and I'll just read briefly, um, define a furlough, describe the financials of what a furlough would look like, how much has the city currently paid to furloughed employees, which wouldn't actually be furloughed employees, that would be paid administrative leave employees, so I'd like to have that number if it's not, because we did get those two grants, so I'd like to see um, if we're in the red or in the black on that one. That's that number I said, Julianne, that's the 60000 Yep, and then the seventy thousand. We the, what we paid to date is sixty four thousand oh, two hundred twenty three eighty, and we received six oh. hundred and thirty some thousand. Okay, okay. So I'll have to reread that a little yep. care, more carefully. Um, how much would it cost to continue any furloughing with those employees deemed non essential? What was the process for determining who was essential versus non essential? What discussions were held with AFSCME Union regarding furlough and who was in attendance? What does health care benefits look like with furlough? Define layoff. Describe financials of what layoffs would look like. How much would it cost the city to lay off non-essential workers? What savings would be recognized? What is, in, what is the process of determining layoffs? What discussions were held with AFSCME unit, if any, regarding layoffs and who is in attendance? What does health care benefits look like with layoffs? Could an MOU be reached to continue to maintain health care benefits should layoffs be necessary? And I asked for budgeted numbers for each department regarding payroll, projections regarding property tax collection and potential loss of city revenue, pro projections regarding the city's portion, not the 1% allocated to the MEC project, of sales tax collection and potential loss of city revenue. So I greatly appreciate you putting all of that into this packet because those were some of the questions that I, as a city councilor, needed to understand some of that definition and what that financial impact would look like. Um, and to Councillor Baraboo's point, um, I'm, it's interesting that you have that information. And I'm also concerned, though, that if people that are homeowners that have their PITI included with their mortgage, if they have um, deferred their, those payments, they're being allowed to defer payments for 90 days. And with that deferment, then would, be, would come the deferment of, of that property tax payment. So I think it's important that we do, I mean, I know that's a really big number, um, Sherry, of that 924,000 and change, 
Um, so I think it's important that we all work together and be mindful as to, you know, how we put this plan together. Um, and again, I appreciate those, those questions being answered. Um, and my next question then, when it says the employee shall pay for unemployment benefits, that's kind of what we're getting at with, with this furlough process. And I'm not sure what the unions have, have thought about that or how that will affect their crews or their workers. But um, maybe um, we could hear from them at some point, you know, regarding what their, um, I guess, just where they feel that as a union or as a department head that would serve their employees and their departments um, best while still keeping in mind um, the potential issues we're going to have with the not only sales tax, with, but also with property tax. So I guess that would be my, my questions and my comments. And Pam, I hope that you could hear me. Yes, I did, Councilor Paulson. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Councilor Johnson? my light off because I think yep. it's muting yep. the yep. microphone that's picking up for Pam. So thank you. Th this will be my sign that I want to talk. <laughs> um, hey, I, I'll, I'll know that next time. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to process all of this. Uh, so basically we're looking at a million dollar shortfall over the next several months because we don't know what we're going to be getting. Um, because it doesn't matter what state law says right now. If the county doesn't have money to give us, we can't get the money. Um, and I think that's a, a valid something to really think about here because um, people are still very nervous. It doesn't matter if they've planned out for their payments or not, they still don't know what's going to happen, and so people are being very careful. Um, as I've processed this and, and, and listening to all the points um, and reading the packet information, this is my take. Right now we're paying everybody full as if, everything was perfectly normal. Right. And what we need to do as a city is say, okay, we're gonna be a million dollars short. We need to furlough employees so we're not paying them directly, but they can keep their medical and other benefits. And then they can apply for and we'll get unemployment, which for some of them will be actually a raise right. to stay home and, and, and take care of their families and, and that kind of stuff. Um, the, the idea, your idea, Bridge, is that's done on a voluntary basis to start, that, that we say, hey, we're going to furlough people. Who wants to go? They send in an uh, email or it, uh, some kind of written something. Something written. Something yes. written. Um, and then we prioritize that based on seniority and union. Department and okay. needs of the okay. city. Yes. Um, so those people are actually volunteering. So we're not saying, hey, you're out of here. They're saying, hey, I want, I want to help the city by moving forward with this. Yes, and I do want to point out there is still the very real valid concern of COVID-19. Yes. So we have some staff that are very nervous that even though the federal law gives them 12 weeks off at two-thirds pay, what if something happens? Is there worry? So they don't want to use that yet until something happens. So we have some very valid concerns that we have to try to address as well. Some of the staff really just wants to be home. Yep. And, and keep it's their family so. safe by not being exposed on a regular basis. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, so I, I think that, that the staff, you have definitely done your diligence on this. And the room, this is the most people we've had a city council meeting forever. <laughs> so I appreciate all of you being here with your concerns. And I, too, um, with Councillor Paulson and, and hoping to hear from the individual representatives as we move forward on their take. And um, if they think that they're what they anticipate happening. Um, so I, uh, as for projects, I, I validate your point, but I think the idea here is, is that we don't have the money to pay for the staff. To get, we may not have that. So, um, you know, it, it's looking different when... It doesn't matter where you get your information at this point. The future is going to be different. It doesn't matter who you believe or where you're, what, what source of information. Um, our reality now is different than it was two months ago. And I think we need to be respectful of that when it comes to our employees too and listen to them. And I think that's, that's what's been happening based on the information you've provided to us. Um, I, I think that my, my only other question that I jotted down here, um, well, it's two. So when will we know when we go back to a new normal, and one of the 
line items on here was meeting on a regular basis. I guess I'd like to have that defined, what the regular basis is, once a week, once every two weeks, just so that um, we, are, and obviously we can call any meeting at any time, but, but I'd like that defined for the employees so that they know how that communication and when that communication is happening so um, we can be on top of any further changes depending on how things happen. Um, Check my notes real quick. Uh, I jump in real quick while you're checking your notes. Yes, please. I would suggest every two weeks because what I've been telling the staff through all this all this paid administrative leave, we've been working in two week blocks. Everything's been two weeks. So just listening to governor's orders and how he's been progressing, we've been just reacting in two week set sessions. We'd we'd probably follow that same format. Okay, I'd be very comfortable with every two weeks, knowing that of course you, if something big happens, Correct. you can um, change it in. So um, then procedurally. Do we need to pass a resolution today, or is it what? What is the action if we were to take one? We would need to take today. We would take a motion, probably in the form of a wave, wave the written resolution to a furlough an X amount of number of city staff. And, and, and whether that be voluntary or not voluntary, just a furlough of staff based on. I would on leave it vague, and vague, then we can right. attach the plan to the right. resolution. Right. Okay, thank you, Britt. Okay, thank you. And another thing to keep in mind is as we look at these furloughs moving forward, you know, what departments are, you know, as uh, are essential to continue to provide the minimum amount of city services that are required for us to maintain, you know, our city so that the health and safety of our communities and suffering as a result of this. And secondly is what departments or what services do we provide that actually generates revenue or helps generate revenue for their budget. Those are the issues that we have to look about as well as we consider these uh, furloughs. Because if, if we're getting revenue from a department, maybe that, you know, maybe th that area doesn't get furloughed because they're, they're bringing money into the community and in, into us as well. So I can think of a couple of those uh, as we move forward. Councillor Baraboo. Mayor, you're going exactly the question I was going to ask. Looking at this, I believe the city and, and with this uh, policy has the right, uh, we don't have to allow anybody to be furloughed if we have an essential department. We want to keep working example, fire department, police department. Do we have the auspices of not allowing a furlough in those departments? I don't, it doesn't really say in this uh, information. It says the city to determine yes. staffing levels. So I'm assuming that covers, covers that. Because we have those essential services, we, we, we just can't abandon those for our citizens in Virginia. Um, and I believe most of our ambulance calls are within the city limits, correct? About 70%? Okay. Um, and of course, our police department, it's uh, basically most of it is probably almost 100% within the city limits. Uh, and those are essential. Uh, I'm seeing more and more individuals I think they're homeless, but I'm not sure. By the time I get out to my alley and stuff, I'm seeing them walking down with backpacks, with other stuff. With One of them had a drill in his hand the other day, so I don't know whether they're breaking into garages or what. Um, but I'm concerned, so we need to keep our police uh, uh, staff going because this is tough on any individual that's out there that may be lacking money. Uh, so j that answers my question, Mayor, and thank you for going that direction because that was my question. Uh, thank you, Councilor Baraboo. Uh, Councilor Paulson. Um, thank you, Mayor. I think I had one, just one other thing I'd like to ask um, when the department heads or any of the union members come forward. Um, regarding the volunteerism um, to be furloughed, whether it's starting from most seniority um, to be placed on furlough, and if no volunteers uh, received, that it would start from the least senior. And my question is, um, do you feel that in any of your departments or amongst your union uh, members that there's going to, that this will create any angst or animosity between employees that are working and <clears throat> those that are not working and essentially being paid and in some cases being paid um, more? Um, so I guess I, I'd like to, I don't know why that's doing that. I'd like to understand um, from the department heads and union members 
um, or union reps, if that is um, affecting. And I think where I'm going with this is I, I'm trying to be really mindful of all employees. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Paulson. Uh, okay. Um, one more thing before somebody, oh, the unions yeah, come up. I was just going to say, could you have any yep. more that just before? Just before the unions come up, up, I just rep. want to point out that furlough is equal hiring freeze also. So there will be no, because of the union contracts, if there's a layoff or reduction in workforce, we cannot hire anybody no, either. of course so not. So just to make that clear for the public and for everybody else, there is a hiring freeze then if this furlough goes into place. Thank you. Yeah, yep. good, uh, good clarification. That's true. Okay, I would ask uh, at this juncture, anybody, any individual uh, a member of a bargaining unit, uh, any department head, any... Uh, 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 union representative that would like to come and speak, uh, please come forward at this time. Uh, Chief, uh, would, you, uh, would you please just state your name for the record so Pam knows who's speaking. Make sure the microphone's on. And uh, move forward. So, Pam, can you hear me? Pam, are you there? Yes. Yes, All I right. can. <laughs> All right. Uh, for the record, this is Deputy Chief Chad Nickel, Virginia Police Department. Uh, Mayor, Council, appreciate your time today unfortunate conversation that we have to have, but it's time to have it, I guess. Um, as far as LELS union, I really don't want to speak on their behalf, but I will say as far as the police department, um, you know, we have one officer currently overseas in Kuwait on military leave. That is a body that essentially the city is in pain for this whole year. He's gone until probably about October. You know, I mean, we look across the board here and we're looking one officer possibly being on the chopping block. I can tell you that our least senior officer is an individual that just left a very good paying job with the state patrol to come work for us. He would be that low person on the totem pole, so to speak. Before you jump in, Chad, yeah. Sherry and I had actually calculated the officer overseas as our one cut. That's a perfect answer, too. I love that answer. <laughs> and I haven't know? had a chance to talk to any of the unions okay. or anything before this meeting today. Yep. But that was our intent, was that we would count the one officer who is overseas who is not being paid yep. by the city because he's being paid by the U.S. military and bless his heart for being in the military. Absolutely. Thank him. Um, he would be the one person in your department. Good deal. That, um, and, and then however, as far as... your staff still has that ability through the federal leave, that yep. if they need to take time off, they absolutely can. Absolutely. Good deal. Um, and then as far as MAPE is concerned, we do know that there currently isn't a library director per se. Um, so there is another body. Not to mention we have had several individuals over you know, the course of 2020, especially early on, that were on some sort of medical leave and whatnot. Again, portions of that. And then also obviously looking at, if it had to get to that far, looking at part-timers prior to looking to full-time employees. Um, so those are just kind of those major concerns that we tend to have at this point. So. Any questions for me before I pass the mic? No, uh, thank you, Chief. I think that uh, this is what exactly what we're talking about is the communication between our staff and the bargaining units representatives to make sure that whenever adjustments are going to be made, they're going to be made, be made reasonable in accordance with union contract and, and in each individual department's uh, current employee status. So the example given, you have one on leave already, there's your cut there if that has to be done. If, they, if it has to be done, right? And Absolutely. so that with every other organization as well. So those questions that you have hopefully are being answered, not only from MAPE, but from ASPE and others as our staff continues to move forward. Because we as a city council, you know, we're, you know, we're supposed to be policy makers, we're supposed to be making the decisions about, you know, what direction we give our staff moving forward. And this is one of the most difficult decisions that we have to make among the, 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 the regular course of business because it has an adverse effect to some degree on our, our long-time city employees, whether, well, all our city employees. So I think it's imperative that we continue that communication. And I think Sherry and Britt has been, you know, I think done the yeoman's work. Hopefully you're, you're being communicated in a manner that's going to help address those issues. So thanks, Chief. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Next uh, on the list, uh, Chief Lewis. Good morning, Council. Uh, my name is Alan Lewis. I'm the Fire Chief and Emergency Manager for the City of Virginia. Uh, Pam, if you can hear me. Yes, I can. All right. Thank you. So it is an unfortunate conversation. I want to thank City Administration. I want to thank the Council for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, I just want to, for a little bit of perspective, yesterday was the highest uh, fatality day in the state of Minnesota. We had 28 people die of COVID-19. Um, in St. Louis County, we have 61 cases. Ten of those are fatalities. That's one of the highest death rates in the state per county. Now, a lot of those are in 
congregate care facilities. The wave hasn't really hit us yet. Um, and to cut your fire and EMS department at a time like this, I think is, is unconscionable. So, and I appreciate Councillor Baraboo's uh, statement about the revenue generation. So Virginia Fire and Ambulance brings in about $3 million a year to the city. Now, a lot of that goes into the payment of the salaries of the people that provide that public service. We try as much as possible to run it as a business um, with business principles, but we are a public service and we provide that public service. Currently, I have two positions unfilled in the department. I've had two members indicate to me that they will be leaving us um, sometime by midsummer. In addition, I have two more members that will have significant, uh, that will have medical um, leave. So if we're in a hiring freeze, I'm down two, I'm going to lose two, and I'm going to have two out on medical leave. This is a significant impact to us. I, I cannot afford to lose anyone else from the department at this time. So, and, and I would ask if it comes Have to the- Have you gotten in writing when those two are going to leave this midsummer? One has been accepted into medical school, and he begins- July. So he, he will be gone. Not in writing. Not in writing but and he has, he's been accepted in who writing. Who would need it in writing, his date? He, and I'm sure he, I don't want to speak for him. <laughs> um, I, I don't think that will be a problem. And the medical um, leave you're expecting when? The medical leave, I, I really can't, I really can't get into that. Um, it, it, it's going to happen. That's about all I can say. I want to respect the privacy of those individuals. Um, so again, down to Got two leaving, and two are going to be out on medical. We're, we're going to be hurting. In, in addition, people have been deferring their vacation times in order to prepare for this uh, wave that's going to hit. And at some point, those vacation times will need to be taken. Sick times will build up. And you could find yourself in a situation where we come to a minimum level of staffing and we start having to force people to stay over if, if these cuts happen. When you start forcing people, you run up your sick time, and it becomes a downward spiral. In addition, the first thing to get cut will be the inter-facility transfers, the largest single generating thing that we do. So you will get even less money. It is literally shooting yourself in the foot to cut any more positions at this point. I thank you for your time, and I would ask that if you decide that we do have to cut positions that you um, work with the department heads and, and uh, allow them to help in making those decisions and um, if there is a cut that needs to be made, I'll take the furlough first because I feel that that would be my responsibility. And if I haven't significantly justified the value and the service that we provide, then I need to be the one to go. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Chief. Could you step this just for a moment? Thank you. I think that those are those are mitigating factors when considering your total staffing levels. I think the uh, the projections based upon a total staffing levels, so these particular instances would uh, equate to, uh, well, I would, for the lack of a better term, leverage toward that. I agree for essential services, particularly the people that generate revenue, like I talked about before, like Councilor Berber talked before, that we have to make sure that we can do that. And I think the projections are based upon uh, your, full, your full capacity of personnel that you have before you. Obviously, you're not at full capacity. So by cutting in individually even more so does, you know, go to your point. And I think that's something that's going to be taken into consideration uh, by our city staff moving forward. And the staff will work with the departments, particularly those generating revenue, to ensure that we don't compromise the, the, the safety and health of our community, particularly the citizens of Virginia, at the same time providing the essential services that are necessary. I think you've, you've conveyed uh, professionally and, and poignantly that you know, by doing so, may uh, may compromise some of the service that we provide with respect to health and safety. So, thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate and uh, I do appreciate the time to address the council here. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else like to come forward? Uh, Paulson has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I sorry, uh, Councilor Paulson. Thank you. Um, I, I actually, I guess, this is a question for us as a as a body, um, as well as <clears throat> excuse me, the union reps. Um, but could LELS and IASF be considered outside of a hiring freeze if that's the way we go? Would that be, I mean, I think those are our, our public safety and our uh, firefighter EMS, EMTs. I'm sorry, I don't know why my thing keeps doing that. Um, but I feel like that, to me, that that's a reasonable, that 
that they are, they would remain, those two unions would remain outside of any potential hiring freeze um, to protect our communities as well as generate the revenues of the ambulance service. So I, I, I don't know if that's something we could take into consideration and not to short the AFSCME union, but I, I think we're talking about um, obviously different positions within our city. I, I think we have to keep in mind too that staff are concerned. Staff, some staff are going to volunteer to go home because they are very worried about COVID-19. So it's not just the, it's, there's a twofold factor to this. It's not just the city needs to reduce costs. It's that they, we have staff that do not want to come to work because they are terrified for their family. And so this is a great way for them to go, no matter which department they're in. You know, it's, so it just, it's the balance of trying to keep that in mind. I think asked me was next. I think. She uh, thank you, Councillor Paulson. Uh, can we bring? Some, uh, did you have no, some? Go ahead. Okay, go thank ahead. you, uh, Amanda. Did you like to come up and uh, uh, address the council? Sure. Amanda Metza. Uh, I'm the AFSCME representative. Um, thank as you, you can see from the packet, we have been in conversation with city administration um, over COVID-19 and these layoffs on a regular basis. Um, we have drafted a letter of understanding. I do not want that to be taken as a tentative agreement. This is very preliminary. It's not something that we've discussed with our membership, but we did want to start the conversation um, with the understanding that um, this is a possibility. Um, the only thing that I would say is that I encourage the council to make a resolution, if possible, that um, allows administration to have the conversation to furlough up to a number of people rather than setting a firm amount. Um, the one thing I think that's important to our membership um, is that this is driven by data and that this is driven as much as possible by the, the actual revenues that are available. Um, and so um, I think that would be something that would be important um, for you to consider. Um, you know, we've been trying to take a look at this based on the information that's out there on the data and the needs of the membership. The letter of understanding we've drafted would be through July 31st um, for the explicit purpose of addressing those unemployment payments um, and and being having the time to evaluate the city revenues as they change or occur. Um, and so um, you can see some of the information to your question, I think, earlier, which was about the question of animosity, obviously furloughs and layoffs and any of those kinds of conversations um, have the potential to cause issue. They are certainly complicated. Um, one of the things that we are seeking to address within this um, with city administration would be the idea of those volunteer, the voluntary piece. And so rather than the layoff language of our contract, which forces the least senior, um, allowing those who may be interested and who are more senior to accept this sort of layoff, um, is, is an attempt to have that conversation. Um, but our departments are complicated. Our contract um, encompasses many departments within the city, many job classifications, um, decades of experience, and that is going to be a complicated thing um, that we're attempting to work through. I don't know if there's anything else for us to say at this point. We understand the needs and we understand the concern, um, and we want to work with the city um, to make some a reasonable proposal that we can um, get agreement on with our membership. Uh, yes, thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that very much. Uh, the, the question that I have, or the, the you know, with respect when we come to a res to vote for a resolution, hoping that we're going to have a resolution and moving forward, you know, the point that you make and the point that we've discussed about. Uh, how many uh, of these furloughs are going to be mandated? We don't know. It depends upon who volunteers and who doesn't. Uh, I would suggest right? up to, the way that this reads is up to 28, would be the number we'd be looking for. Up to 28. Up to 28. Okay. What's well, going to be my next question? Yeah. Okay, yeah. a clear volume. Thank you very much. Up to 28. So. On the same wavelength. Right. Okay. <laughs> they were on the same wavelength. They were on the frequency together. Okay. Uh, Councilor Freely. Um, I guess, like, when I think in terms of what we're doing right here, and it's obvious that a lot of homework has been done to come up with these projected recommendations for potential cuts and furlough. Um, you know, it used to, like, when I worked with the school system, they'd always talk about, when we're talking about similar situations, it would be, well, 85% of your budget is in personnel. Well, that was always indicative to me 
of how valuable our personnel really are. It's not about what we're doing, it's about who's doing it. And so I want you to be realizing that that's, from my standpoint, I want you to understand that, that that's very hard for me to, to deal with because when we're talking about these people, we're not talking about what you do, we're talking about you and how you do it. So that's important to me. Um, but we are getting to the point now where we have significant potential deficits that we're gonna be facing up to a million dollars. And we're at that point now, and I think I appreciate what Amanda just said, that we have to talk about in terms of up to what we need to do and then determine based on the data that comes forth over time what's appropriate um, for the necessity of meeting the budget restrictions that we're going to see. So in any event, I just want you to realize, want you to know that from my perspective, it isn't about what we're doing, it's about who we're doing. And, and, and you people are very important, and that's why a significant portion of our budget is in personnel. It's the value of who we, we have employed. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Very well said, Councillor Freely. By I think we all concur. I do for sure. Uh, the f the goal for me is is I when I talk to these other mayors throughout these communities and I get information from the Minnesota Mayors Association. There's a lot of cities that are laying off staff. How they're doing that, I don't know. What the process is moving forward, but I, I have to say, and 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 please, if you disagree with me, I, I'd like to hear about it. But I think our bargaining unit personnel. Our, the representatives and our city staff have been working very closely together to try to minimize any, any impact we have on our, our employees. There's going to be impact. Unfortunately, that's the case. But how we go about that is important. How we value our employees are important. How we move forward this process incrementally. And by making a resolution today to furlough up to so many employees, that could change. That could go down. It could go up, depending upon what happens you know, in the next few months. But this is a starting point. We, we, we've, we're ahead of the game with respect to that. We just didn't announce that, you know, uh, a mayor makes a decision uh, through the city council that we are going to cut uh, three people from public works and two police officers, you know, without any, sp any knowledge of, of how that affects, you know, they're just looking at the, at the, at the, at the, uh, re or the, re or the, um, the expense side of things. But we're, work we're working at the health side of things too here. So I think we're trying to do Yoma's work. I think we, we I think you, I want to say that Brett and Sherry and you here are sitting here today and the people that you represent are, we're all on the same page length. We're all on the same link. We want to make sure that your, your impact on you is as little as we possibly can. That's why we're looking at furloughs. That's why we're looking at these other things at this point in time. That's why we're looking at other measures, the voluntary uh, uh, furloughs, the, the potential early retirements, if that's a, 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 on a voluntary basis, if that's a feasible thing. So as we negotiate through that, or as we navigate through, not negotiate, but as we navigate through all this, we'll know how many are going to actually you know, be mandated or not. We hope that's going to be uh, as little as possible. And another thing I'd, I'd like to maybe clarify, if you would, for me, Britt, when you look at, I'll, I'll give you the example, when you look at public works and you look at the potential furloughs and say yeah, we, we get, uh, say we have to mandate, just as, as an example, uh, somebody from public works. You know, by working with the department head and the staff to determine who goes first and who doesn't, the question for me is, is that, you know, if, if you have a heavy equipment operator that's been working here for two years and you have a utility guys working here for five years and you need the heavy equipment operator to operate, how does that work on the seniority ass side of it? So that would be my question moving forward. I don't need to know that right now, but I know that's just something that is, is within, within the AFSCME, you know, as you would talk about the angst that people have about that. So you have to work through that. And I think working through that with our city staff will, you know, I th I th we guide that through based upon a collaborative effort between all of us. That makes sense? Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else have anything before we um, move forward with a potential resolution or motion here? Uh, Councillor Baraboo? Yeah, Mayor, that was uh, why I asked that one question earlier. Who has the determination of uh, what's considered an essential worker when these uh, issues come up like that? If you need a mechanic, if you got broken down equipment, you got to have the mechanic. If you need a heavy equipment operator, you have to have special licensure uh, for those particular things. You can't just throw anybody in there if we've got work that needs to be done by uh, the particular staff, uh, or they need to use a back or whatever it might be. So um, 
that's why I wanted to make sure that that was covered in this uh, memorandum. Who's going to have the final say? So are we going to are we going to have a direct communication written with the unions and all that's going to be determined, or oh, yes. going to, or are we going to have to have an MOU for every one of these special occasions? No, written. and actually, emergency executive order from Governor Walls um, twenty twenty defines critical or essential employees. So we use that as our basis for those that got to go do the rotation to go home and stay on paid administrative leave and those who got to just go home and vice versa, who had to stay. And then also we did talk to the unions that asked me at great length about we were going to have to look at by department and by job classification because they're, they're not all equal. Sewer crew is, a, is an absolute essential position that we have to have staff in the sewer crew, and that's a licensed position. We have to have somebody qualified. Um, those are just discussions we have to have, and we know it's going to be a long process once we get this MOU done, if this is what the council goes, but we're going to work through it together. That was my basic concern, so I appreciate that. And uh, I, I did know that from reading that, but I just wanted to make it public. So thanks, Brett. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Berbo. Councilor Johnson. Um, so I guess I've been sitting back here thinking, um, I'd like to offer that uh, maybe the council should not be paid during this time. If we're, if we're asking our employees to sacrifice, I personally am willing to not, not get paid during this time until it's, I mean, just doing the rough estimate, that's about $3,700 a month, a couple months, that's some makeup. So that would be something I'd be willing to offer up to the staff to figure out how we can do that if the council is agreeable to that. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Johnson. You read my mind. I was going to be under other items of concern as we finish this topic up. But while we're on that topic of a discussion, I completely concur with you. I'd be willing to give up my pay uh, uh, until July 31st or beyond if that's necessary. Move forward if it saves a job or helps keep people some and continue to work. So, Councilor Bearable. Yeah, that puts me in a, a huge mind, uh, Mayor, to, to give up um, that because I have. Uh, lots of my stuff um, based on, on the salary that we re receive. All of my health insurance for my family, and I have some huge health insurance problems. I cannot give that money up uh, because I, I get zero. I've, I've made uh, 100 and some dollars for the whole year so far. That's it. The rest of it gets taken out for uh, individual health insurance and the other things that I have that I've, and I've been here for 26 years. And I'm not going to give it up because I need need that to keep my family. I don't have that big of retirements, so I can't afford. I'm, I'm like the employees. I can't afford if they don't have money coming in. Well, I, I, I think, uh, Councilor Berbo, I, I would like to... It should be on an individual basis. Okay. I, I would just like to clarify. I'm not asking all the council to do that. I'm just saying I'm willing to do that. Give up the salary. I'm not talking about benefits. I'm talking about the salary itself. You know, I mean, I and I don't know if Councilor Johnson is referring to both salary and benefits or not, but it's my understanding, you know, it's the pay uh, that we're concerned about. So the employees would continue to get their, uh, on their furlough program, uh, continue to get the employer portion of their benefits paid, and they would continue to pay their, uh, their, their obligation, family, or single coverage. The only difference is they would have to mail it, and they, or we'd have to, you know, we wouldn't be able to take it out of a paycheck. So I think what we're talking about is salary. So you know, if, if I make like five hundred dollars a month less taxes, everything is worth two hundred thirteen bucks or whatever it is. You know, you know, it's a token, a gesture. But if collaboratively, if we did that from a salary perspective, it might save one job you know, for one month or whatever on a monthly basis. So I think that's what I'm looking at uh, just as an offer. Council Johnson, did you want to clarify any of your point of, at all? Thank you, Mayor. As, as the furlough would be, we would not be taking, you know, and that's why I leave it up to the staff to figure out those details. But, um, but the idea is, is that we're asking our employees to sacrifice um, income um, on a voluntary basis, and I too, I, I would volunteer that income portion. I think that they're going to be able to keep their benefits is probably the best part of it is that they will not have to worry about that. And again, I don't know the details of that on, on how that would work. So um, that's where I'm at for myself and my family at this time. Um, I, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to clarify. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councilor Johnson. And so I don't know if we need this in the form of a resolution or not, but it maybe could we could do this on an individual basis. If we want to show some unity within respect to the council, we could we could do that one way or the other. I don't know. 
but I am going to, uh, do I have the authority under, you know, Let for me, me to give Let me check with the city attorney, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah is, can we ask the yeah. city, that's about, can we ask the city attorney if uh, we could just do that individually or how, how that works? Yes, I will. So let's, let's ask the city attorney uh, what's feasible for that. Uh, would you do that, Britt? I will do that. And then we can come back with, uh, with a recommendation moving forward or whatever we decide as, as a council or if we could do this individually. Uh, either way, uh, you know, it's only prudent from my perspective that because, you know, that's what I feel. And then we, you know, individuals will have to make that determination. So right now we're looking for, you need a, re a motion for a resolution. And uh, so craft the form of the motion that you're going to need from us, uh, Britt. I would suggest that we authorize a furlough starting, and the date is something we can talk about, starting on such and such date of up to 28 employees. Okay. Make it vague and simple so that it's negotiable with the... Because right behind it, and Amanda alluded to that in your packet as a draft letter right. of intent. It's just a draft. They haven't approved it. We would have to do one for every department, every um, union contract. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. I'll call Sir Bearable. Uh, if we do that, um, uh, this is a special meeting, correct, Brett? Correct. So we need to waive the written resolution. The resolution. So I'll make May. that I'll make that motion to start the process. Uh, so the motion is to waive, waive the written the resolution, resolution and move forward with the authorization for city staff to furlough up to twenty eight employees. Two two separate uh, motions actually. Okay. So what is your first motion? First motion is to waive the written resolution for this. Okay. Thank you. So motion by Councilor Barabu to waive the written resolution with respect to the uh, authorization for uh, the uh, to follow up to 28 employees. So just waive the written resolution. Just motion to waive the, waive the written resolution. So I don't know, which would come first? That one. Okay. So motion on the floor by Councilor Barabu to waive the written resolution. Is there support? Support. Support by Councilor Johnson. Is there any further discussion? Councilor Paulson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'll... Absolutely go along with that. I just um, don't know if there's any other department head or union rep that wants to come and address us before we go forward and um, formally make these motions. Okay, once again, for the third time I'll ask, is there anybody else that would like to come up and speak? Very good. Thank you. Scott? Good afternoon. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, out of them 28 that you're talking about furloughing, 23 of those are going to be from public works. So there's going to be a large amount of work that's not going to be able to get done. Because basically what's going to happen with these is you're going to have your bare essentials, which is your sewer and that. Then it's going to come down to cutting grass. Because you have to realize now, we as AFSCME get the golf course back. So everybody that's at the golf course will be let go. So we're going to have to accommodate for people to mow the grass at the golf course, maintain the golf course and everything else, plus all the city parks. We've been in contact with uh, Britt and Sherry, and it's been awesome dealing with them. You know, we've been able to get to agreements. But I just want to emphasize that I know the fire department has said their stuff and the, and the police department. We also have to take into consideration the public works, which is there's a lot of essential stuff that we need to do there. So just remember that 23 people from public works out of the 28. That's the thing that I want to emphasize here. You know, we need everybody that we can to do it because once the grass starts growing, then we're not going to be able to do anything, basically, but the basic stuff. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Councillor Paulson, for making that request. I didn't realize that uh, it was somebody else come forward. Thank you, Scott, for doing so. I think we have to work through that somehow and, and come up with that. So we waived the written resolution for that. Is there that was moved and supported? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the second motion, please. We need a second motion to uh, um, allow uh, city staff to work with the bargaining units in order to uh, look at a furlough of up to, up to 28 employees. Is that correct, Britt? Okay, looking for that motion. 
Do I have a motion? Mayor, I also move that uh, motion. We have to be proactive, even though we may not pull the trigger. And I believe Britt would um, work with the unions to set a start date and with Sherry, so, and with yourself. So okay. no, no date, no start date in that motion. That work moved in, moved by Councillor Baraboo to uh, uh, for a motion to allow city staff to work to direct city staff to work with the bargaining units and their representatives uh, in a in a um, in an effort to look at uh, the furloughing up to up to twenty eight employees. That's the motion by Councillor Baraboo. Is there support? I'll reluctantly support. Uh, reluctantly supported by Councillor Friedley. And in anticipation of the loss of revenue from the tax base. Thank you. Is supported by Councillor Baraboo. Further discussion? Quickly, I, I do real quick. I, I, You know, this can change. It can disappear. You know, I mean, we're, t we're taking the, uh, making the resolution, taking the approach and taking the vote based on the current Projections that we have that could change in a week two weeks next month. We don't know But this is the authority of up to and I think it's important that that is part of the motion up to because you may not have to uh, Do that many so I uh, Councilor Freely, do you have something else you'd like to add? Okay, thank you All right uh, any further discussion Councilor Johnson. Thank you mayor Does the motion need to include exemptions for public safety or is that Written in or how? No, it's by governor's order. The critical, excuse me, critical and essential versus non essential. So the the hiring freeze then would that? That just automatically goes into place whenever there's a layoff or furlough. Would we, based on what the chief had said about six, if my math six or more, does that mean then we just can't no matter what? Or is there ability, if, if someone were to leave tomorrow and now there's a potential seventh opening? Then we'd come back to the council like we always do and say, okay, we have to hire. We're too, too low. We need to hire again. But we, we always have that option as a council to yes. exempt a hire based on the need. Yes. And, and um, is, this hasn't happened yet. I mean, if the surge is truly coming, we could yeah. have an entire shift taken out by COVID-19. At that time, we're going to come to you and say, we need an emergency hire right now. We're going to grab anybody off the street who's got a medical license, and we're going to throw them in the ambulances. Don't want to get to that, but that could happen. I mean, that... And now, if there are... If there are other employees in the city who have our, our, our volunteer EMTs yes. or have those things. We've we... even gone out to AFSCME and warned them already. If they have a license, so we're going to ask them to drive. That okay. every employee that was on paid administrative leave or on furlough or on, even on layoff, that if, we're, if we have to get to that point, if there's a massive, massive um, surge up here and we get to that point, we will be calling everybody we have, can you come drive an ambulance? Okay, so so you've already done that work. We've already you had just... that conversation in anticipation that this it could be coming. You know, Chief Lewis mentioned in July is our surge, and we've we have had a, our after member, after members have been absolutely wonderful and have already already raised their hand and said yes, just call us. You need us, let us know. We'll jump in. So it's and been I, a really good discussion. So I far. just really want to validate for people to know that that as a council, we come here every other week or every other other week, and we discuss things. But the, the staff truly are doing everything they can to work with the employees and the unions and the community to make sure we're as ready as we can be. And I really think that goes to say a lot to um, former counselors, councils and the decisions they made and the decisions we've been making that a lot of the things that we pop into our heads, you've already solved as an as a, as administrative body and as a team. So I really want to thank you and appreciate that from, from all of you that you make you make what we're doing a little a lot a bit easier especially at this time so thank you very much okay uh thank you Councillor baraboo do you have something else you'd like to add just uh or quick, we vote? quickly we don't uh, know if there's going to be a surge there's a projection there's going to be a surge there's a lot of mitigation stuff going on right now and after we get done with this vote i'm going to tell you Couple things as a professional, as a pharmacist, you can use to do to protect yourself from that COVID. So, give me a couple minutes afterwards. Okay, uh, we have a motion. Pam, did you get the motion? Yes, I did, Mayor. Thank you. Moved and supported to uh, allow city staff or direct city staff to uh, work with the bargaining units and their representatives on a 
uh, furlough program of up to 28 individuals. Uh, leave that up to negotiation. That's a vague, you know, enough to allow that flexibility. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, does anybody else uh, from uh, uh, the audience want to come up and, and have a say a few words, say anything you like, uh, any questions, comments, or concerns uh, at this point in time? Okay, seeing none, Councillor Baraboo, did you have something that you'd like to provide uh, to the I'm body? I'm just going to provide a real quick uh, couple minute uh, uh, scenario here. Um, I've been in contact with a uh, pharmacist that uh, has all his big high credentials and a gentleman that is a big professor down at the University of Nebraska that worked for the Mayo Clinic that did the peanut allergy and studies and did all that stuff and perfected that for peanut allergies. They're telling me that the uh, coronavirus that's out there, there's a mechanism that uh, it goes through and the inflammatory condition can be stemmed. If you think you have it or going to have it, you start loading up with zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin A. Those interrupt that process for the inflammatory condition that goes to the, to the lungs. And that's been documented and they know that that's a fact. But you've got to be a little bit careful. Vitamin D and A can become toxic if you get too much. So, uh, you know, just uh, take a couple thousand milligrams a day of C. You can take up to, you know, a thousand or more a day of C. Zinc, you know, a couple a day. They're all over the counter, these medications. So um, those will help uh, with the situation. Um, it's just one of the things that... And the studies that are out there for some of the therapeutics that are coming out are looking really good. And they've got all your new stuff coming out now for the uh, testing programs. The other question I wanted to ask the chief uh, from the fire department, do you have enough B PPEs? You do. Do you, have any more on, do you have any more on order? You've had a good supply, so okay. If nothing else, get to to get to our uh, representative, uh, 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 Mr. Stauber, Pete Stauber, and have him work on it for you. Because there is, there is more out there than people realize. Okay, that's all I needed, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor Burble. Uh Anybody else have anything like to add before we uh, adjourn uh, this committee, the whole personnel meeting? Did you have anything else you'd like oh, to I'm add? I'm good. I'm just keeping my microphone on. Okay, nothing else to come before us today. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, let's work uh, for a common goal and try to mitigate this as much as we can. We stand adjourned. Thank you.